What's up guys, this is Eddie, welcome to a new video. Another year has passed and every year I do the same video which will help you decide if you should play DCO in 2023. Let's go. Before we jump into any conclusions or opinions, please keep in mind for the entirety of this video that DC Universe Online is a 12 years old game. So anyways, a comic based superhero massive multiplayer online game launched in 2010. Hmm. If you're hoping to get graphics like Batman games, you are mistaken my friend. DCO opted for comic style graphics and even though they haven't massively improved on it, but they did improve a lot. The game is still running on Unreal Engine 3 and even though some of us thought that we will be getting a graphic overhaul, a massive update which will change the way DCO look today, we were wrong. Besides getting some PS4 and PS5 clients update, we didn't get anything. But honestly, I don't mind how the game looks, especially if you've been playing this game like me since 2010, you just love it for nostalgic reasons. So overall score for graphics is 7 out of 10. DCO has a lot to offer in terms of gameplay and content. Up till now, they have launched 44 DLCs, which they call episodes. Same thing, basically just different name, but 44 is a lot. This includes a lot of solo missions, two player duos, four player alerts, and eight player raids. You get to visit some of your favorite comic places in open world. For example, Metropolis and Gotham are there without any DLC requirement, but with the DLCs, you can go and roam around in Atlantis, Central City, Tanagar, Infernal Kandak, Temescura, 31st Century New Earth, Doom Washington, Death Metal Washington, Metal Gotham, Flashpoint Gotham, Chaos Gotham, Earth 3 Gotham. I know, I know a lot of reskin maps and locations, but if you think about it, it is what comic books and movies are offering. All the stories revolves around these places. So it's not really developers fault for using the same maps and just reskinning them. But back to the content, you have tons of stuff to do in open world and on duty content so you can't get bored if you are just starting they launch two huge dlcs per year and you get to play a lot of events related content throughout the year for example christmas anniversary event valentine's and so on so not bad when it comes to content easy score 8 out of 10. With the current population around 350,000 subscribers, DCO comes at number 74 out of 138 relevant MMOs, with daily population reaching up to 3,500 players. Now keep in mind this data is only showing the subscribers. There are thousands of players who choose not to subscribe and still play this game on daily basis. So the numbers are slightly on the higher side, but let's put that website aside for a second and let me tell you what the situation really is. As you know, I play this game daily, so here are the hard facts. Saturdays and Sundays are the best time to play. Servers are populated, you will find groups to run content with pretty easily. Weekdays, uh, it's kinda slow, especially Mondays. Then it also depends on the location, time zone and the platform. If you are on PlayStation or PC and playing on US server, it is going to be almost always active. It's kinda like their main server for PC and PS. EU server, totally different story, basically kinda dead. Xbox, Switch are also on the low side compared to PS and PC, but still not that bad. Again, it depends on the time when you play. Like if you're choosing to play at 3 in the morning, well, don't complain if you can't find anybody to run with. Also, whenever a new DLC launches, the population increases like crazy for the first few weeks. So in short, 7 out of 10 for the population considering it's a 12 year old game and still surviving. Although this game isn't pay to play, but it is 100% without a doubt pay to win. You can definitely create a character and play all the DLCs for free, but in order to make your character strong, you need to level up artifacts and get skill points. And that's where the real world money comes in. If you want to be stronger really fast, pay the price. If you want pay, it will take you somewhere around 3 months to a year to level up 3 artifacts. Then there are time capsules which is basically mostly style items but they have feats attached to it. Quickly explaining what feats are, feats are like achievements, you get a style item, you get a feat. Each feat has feat points, 100 feat points is equal to 1 skill points and you use those skill points to make your character stronger. So back to time capsule, in order to access time capsules, styles and feats launched in previous years, you need to have in-game currency called quarks. And the only way to get quarks is to open time capsules. So the fastest way to get quarks is to either buy them with real money or open tons of time capsules by also using real money. Because at the moment, if you do the maths, you can kinda open one time capsule every two to three days. I know your head must be spinning with all these things I've just said. I don't blame you, it is complicated. But once you will start playing, you will know what I mean and you will definitely be needing to spend real money and a lot of it. So my score, three out of 10. 
The biggest part of every MMO out there is player versus player option. And just like almost every other MMO, DCO also has PvP. But unlike every other MMO, DCO stopped focusing on PvP years ago. Last PvP update was 6 or 7 years ago. Superpowers are very much unbalanced when it comes to PvP, but that doesn't mean you cannot PvP. There are still hundreds of enthusiastic players still PvPing even after all this. So you can still PvP, it's just that it might not be that much fun and since the mechanics are broken, you might end up smashing your controller or keyboard. So the choice is yours, my score for PvP is 0 out of 10. Now this game is free to play, as a free to play player you will still have access to every single DLC, every single content, but there are a few limitations. For example, members have more inventory slots than free players, members have access to more bank slots, more broker slots, they get to access unlimited in-game cash while free players has a limit. So you can see more details here in this video. Members also can level up artifacts, augments a little bit faster. Also on top of that you get monthly replay badges, some marketplace cash and extra stuff from daily reward system. So it's a pretty good deal but it all depends where you live. If you are in US, it's going to cost you 10 to 15 bucks a month for the membership. But if you are anywhere else, conversion rate, taxes will change that amount. Like in Brazil, it is super expensive. So do your research before you buy it and do watch the video as I suggested before you decide and overall score for this 5 out of 10. Biggest part of having a wonderful online gaming experience comes to having a nice helping community. Well, that's not the case here. You will be lucky to find one or two friends after meeting thousands over the years who will be nice, down to earth and helpful. I still don't understand why DCS community is like this. Maybe it has something to do with being a superhero or supervillain which makes people forget that they're actually dealing with a real human being behind the avatar. But anyways, one of the most toxic community in all the games. My advice is to always keep your add to ignore button ready and get a thick skin. Community score 1 out of 10, giving 1 for those 2 to 3 friends I found during 10 years of playing this game, rest can suck at Okay, this is something I have always favored DCO4, one of the best character customization I have ever seen. You get to choose from thousands of styles to really define your superhero or villain. Pages and pages of chest pieces, head pieces, legs, boots, hands, auras, materials, even hairstyles. They launched new styles almost every few months and now recently they have started adding new skins too and most of them are hiding behind paywalls but yeah. So you can create anything you want, you can be anything you want and devs also take suggestions from the players if they want anything specific, any specific style in game. If that style is voted enough, you get it in game. For example, we recently got Blue Beetle suit which was voted hundreds of times for the players. So players asked, devs listened, but yeah, great character customization options. My score for this is 10 by 10. That reminds me, I have just launched DCO Customs where you can get a custom DCO character t-shirt of your very own character and name. For more details, visit dcocustoms.com or watch the video in description. So DCO has always been the victim of glitches and bugs and recently with many old developers leaving and new developers joining the team, bugs and glitches have been the worst ever. And when there are glitches and bugs, there are fixes. And when there are fixes, there are down times. So just in past few months, game has been taken down for around 10 times from 3 hours to 8 hours. And please don't forget this is the only MMO which shuts down every day for 15 minutes to 1 hour for daily maintenance. But yeah, the game is full of glitches. You can go to DCO forum, just spend an hour reading thousands of threads about the glitches and bugs and you will know what I mean. So overall score for this 2 out of 10, not giving 0 and giving 2 because devs are aware of the bugs and are trying their best to fix them without breaking the game completely. If you are a returning player playing DCO after years, you will notice a lot has been changed. We have new features which were never there before, for example artifacts, ALIs, augments, daily reward system, house of legends and more. But don't be afraid, since you have played it before, you will get used to it in no time. But if you are a new player planning to get into the game now, I can understand that all of this can be very overwhelming and very difficult to understand at first. But give it some time, don't spend any money in the beginning, level up your character slowly and enjoy the game. Meanwhile, watch video tutorials to understand the basics, I recommend watching this video. You will get used to the mechanics within a month or two, so just take it slow. Many new players quit after a week or two because they find it too difficult to understand, but trust me, it gets easier after some time. So the score for this is 7 out of 10. Now the question remains, should you play DCO in 2023? In past years, I have always said yes. And you should definitely check out last year's should you play video so you can compare what changed. 
But this year I am not so sure about you know if you should play or not. I still play it and I play every day because of nostalgic reasons. It's like getting addicted to coffee or cigarette you know. But yeah give it a shot. Don't spend any money for first couple of months and see if this is right for you. I guarantee you that you will have a lot of fun in the beginning. But with current state of the game it will get frustrating after a bit unless developers step up their game and fix it. So my overall score for DC Universe Online in 2023 is 4 out of 10. I hope you liked the video, if you did give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you guys next time.